an emotional story about a baby boy who died because nobody cared about him. That's the picture prosecutors painted for jurors today during closing arguments in Pervy Patel's feticide and neglect trial. Now it's breaking news that we've been following for almost three hours. That's how long the jury has been deliberating. WSBT 22's Kelly Stopsinski is live outside the courthouse tonight. And Kelly, Patel's lawyer warned jurors not to let emotions decide the case. In closing arguments, Rick, he told them, this is a hard case. I don't have to like it, and neither do you, but you have to do what's right. Also, in closings, the, de the deputy prosecuting attorney for the state told jurors Patel's intent was to give herself an illegal abortion, and that is what prosecutors say she did. This whole production is about a little boy, said Deputy Prosecutor Mark Rule. He wasn't expected. He wasn't wanted. He lived a brief and horrible life. What happened to him was very, very wrong. Rule reminded jurors about the details they've already heard. That baby was born on the bathroom floor at Patel's home. She wrapped him in plastic bags and put him in a dumpster behind Moe's Southwest Grill in Mishawaka, a restaurant her family owns. Then, when her pain and bleeding wouldn't stop, Patel went to the emergency room. She continued to lie to doctors and nurses who knew better. She tried to keep secret the fact that she'd been responsible for another life and done nothing, Rule said. Then, six months of text messages between Pervy Patel and her best friend about her irregular period, a positive pregnancy test in June, and the abortion pills she ordered online and took, according to those texts. Rule also showed pictures of that dead baby boy. The state wants to talk about things that are emotional, that will tug at your heartstrings, that will make you ignore the lack of evidence presented in this case, said Patel's lawyer, Jeff Sanford. But that's not the decision of a jury. Otherwise, we could take her out front and hang her. He went on to remind jurors the state had no evidence of the drugs in Patel's blood and no proof she even received them from an online pharmacy. He also told them the state did not prove Patel committed feticide or neglect. I don't like these pictures any more than you do because they remind me of my own children, Sanford said. If I had to make a decision on my emotions, I probably would have ended up in jail a long time ago. But this is a court of law. And if the state is going to accuse somebody of an A or B felony, then don't you think we ought to have the evidence to support the charge? Also in closing arguments and jury instructions, jurors got a, a reminder of what feticide abortion and neglect laws say. Rule told them you can have feticide with a live birth. He also reminded them the law says any type of do-it-yourself abortion is illegal. The law says you have to be under a doctor's care. In the jury room with them right now, jurors have all of those laws and also evidence from the last seven days of this trial and also weighing on them right now testimony from 20 witnesses who took the stand in this case. We will be here until a verdict is reached and after it is read, we will bring it to you on social media, on WSBT and also on WSBT News tonight at 10 and 11 o'clock. Jennifer? Well, this, this jury certainly has a lot to consider tonight, Kelly. And the jury still inside that courtroom, at least. I know just before you went on the air here at 6 o'clock, you had sent out a tweet saying that they were all in the courtroom once again. And they had a question, right? That's right. Just a couple of minutes ago, the jurors wanted to know about charts that were discussed by the pathologist who testified in this case. They said, were those charts admitted into evidence? And if so, can we have them? The answer to those questions, no and no. What those charts talked about is, is kind of interesting in this case. Talked about the, the size of that baby compared to other babies born. Their medical charts that, that the pathologist used to talk about the possible age of that baby boy. And that's another big part of this case because those uh, those ages, whether it was between 25 and 30 weeks, is the different numbers that jurors have been given. So again, they're not going to be able to see those. And we will be able to go in if there are any more questions. And you can follow me on Twitter as well, Jennifer. All right. Well, they're certainly talking and doing a lot of consideration tonight. Yes. Kelly, thank you.